a lot has changed in terms of racial progress in this country. We elected a black president twice. But despite mountains of evidence to the contrary, there remains an abiding belief that political success for blacks is the key to economic success for blacks. Since 1970, the number of black elected officials has grown from fewer than 1,500 to more than 10,000. The problem is that all this political clout never really paid off economically for the black poor. It's time to question the strategy. Prior to the 1960s, in the first half of the 20th century, we saw racial gaps narrowing in income and academic achievement and elsewhere. Blacks were not only making gains in absolute terms, but gaining on whites. And the black poverty rate fell by 40 percentage points. Those who continue to cite the legacy of slavery and the legacy of Jim Crow as blanket explanations for today's disparities are seldom asked to explain how so much black progress was able to occur in this earlier era. But following the black leadership's decision to shift much of their focus to attaining political power, that previous progress slowed down or stalled, and in some cases, even reversed course. Now, this country's racist past should never be forgotten or sugarcoated. Ending racism is a worthy goal. But history shows that it is not a precondition for blacks and other minority groups to advance economically. In the 1970s and 80s, and even into the 90s, the poorest blacks in America saw their incomes decline at more than double the rate of the poorest whites. Those minority groups who have focused first on skills, attitudes, and behaviors have tended to rise faster than groups who have prioritized seeking political power and government favors.